It's a very rewarding job. You are, uh, you go away feeling like you've you've made a difference in someone's life and also their family unit so especially a person's you know the end of their life and we would love to think that they had lots of love and positive experiences. Being an RN in aged care we face a lot of challenges um, behaviours with residents not only with residents but we have to liaise on a level with staff too we have different issues. Aged care is a very difficult uh, job but it's the team you work with that makes your employment. We never know what really challenges we're going to face when we come to work in the morning. Um, it can be a frail resident who's suddenly deteriorated overnight or, you know, it can be a staff challenge where you just don't have any staff at all. To have someone actually take the time to call us and say, you're doing a fantastic job or we're really happy or that they are feeling that their loved one is being cared for 100% and that they've seen changes in their lives because of the service we're providing. I believe leadership is important because they're the people we look to and are inspired by. Um, we have wonderful leaders at our workplace who lead with a servant heart and who um, help us to lead as they lead. So leadership to me is really important. It's somebody who can steer the ship. It's somebody who can be trusted to come under, have their governance and um, just be a, a person of support and also somebody who knows where the organisation is going and, and drive everybody else in that same direction. I think an effective leader stands out as being a confident person, a person who is good at what they do and all up is passionate about what they do. They're not just leaders sitting in the office, they really come on the floor to communicate with staffs and communicate with the residents. A great leader needs to look, to have a vision, to see what needs to happen before it happens. I believe that um, if our leaders are leading well, then the people underneath them will lead well and, I, and you know, it, it just works together, like the geese in the formation. Effective leadership carries right through to the care of a client and is obvious in the outcomes. If they're all working down under each other with the common goal, we can all provide better care and that is what the outcome will be. Effective, effective leadership equals better care. Clinical leadership in aged care, CLIAP, was designed to develop leadership capacity among middle managers in aged care. It was underpinned by philosophy of person-centered care, but also providing support for middle managers to um, improve their skills through mentorship and also action learning. And without the steering power from the organization level, at the organizational level, it is very hard to achieve what we can achieve through leadership program. And CLIAC has um, therefore engaged very um, actively with the industry and try to build that capacity as well as providing support for middle managers in the program. We actually can see the difference that it's made in the, in the individuals that have partaken in the study. Like they have genuinely learnt and they've generally put it into practice because there's such a practical component of the program that they're able to take the experience and I guess sometimes think twice before they make a decision, think twice before they say something, think twice before they act in a particular way. You know, part of the reason I uh, engaged in this project is because for the first time there was actually a research study trying to measure impact. What was different about this particular project was the education, that there was a facilitator, there was a mentor to support and lead people through the learning um, rather than, here it is, take it in, package. off you go. I think that, uh, as with all uh, education, people have to be in a place where they feel themselves ready to embark on some process of reflection. 
and CLIAC's designed to provide a supportive environment for people to analyse their own behaviours and to really critically appraise how well they are doing in certain spheres of their practice, what they'd like to improve and what support they need for that. The other central feature to it is about engaging with people in your workplace to enact your own development as well as theirs and being open and mindful to receiving constructive feedback. So the program's actually been designed to take people through a suite of activities that enable them to engage in that type of learning and provide them with information that will help them make sense of the world. So it's really about uh, walking the talk and sense making in context. One of the main factors that influence the outcome of our effort or education and training interventions was to do with the capacity of individual leaders in a particular side that actually influenced the outcome. What we found was that there wasn't enough support for managers to develop their skills and knowledge in supporting their staff and we are relying on managers capacity a lot to actually make a difference without necessarily providing the support that they need to lead their team. I think the distinctiveness is that it's embedded in the organisation and nests within an organisational philosophy of change. I think it moves from a traditional training model where people attend an event or complete an assignment or engage in an activity to actually translating that back into the workplace. And critical to that is the investment of the organisation in supporting people through collaborative learning activities and through mentorship. What we really want to see from our study is to see whether or not the CLIA program, Clinical Leadership in Aged Care program, improves staff work environment, reduces staff turnover, and also improves care quality and safety. They are our primary outcome measures. Participating in CLIAC has given me the skills, the confidence and more education to, to improve my ability to work as a manager and I think that has filtered through the team to motivate the team and encourage them to give the goal of good person-centred care that we want to achieve in aged care. For the team, because we went through it together, it was very empowering because it wasn't just me learning all this wonderful stuff and then, you know, showing it to others, we actually learnt it together. CLIAC has given me many, many benefits in the workforce. I guess staff are one of the major resources of any organisation, especially aged care, and CLIAC gave me many skills to help me manage the, the staff, including conflict resolution and even growth of the staff, which you use on a daily basis. It's totally different. Some of the stuff you may already know, but it's building on what you know. It's building on accommodating that new learning from something like this CLIAC workshop and program. The beauty of CLIAC is the mentoring as well that, that it involves, as well as one thing I probably haven't mentioned today is it gives the, all the people doing the course a, a camaraderie between each other which is really strengthened within the course. I think now it's more a much uh, more a partnership approach where we're coaching the staff and we're showing them different ways rather than telling them different ways of doing things. I saw one of my um, coordinators who started the CLIAC program, possibly with a little bit of negativity, thinking that it was maybe a waste of her valuable time um, and that she felt that she should be with clients instead of participating in the workshop. That same person at the end of it was very sad to see it finish the workshops and some of the um, learnings that um, she took with her have been very valuable for the staff that she leads and also of course the clients because with happier care workers you've got happier clients. I think try it, go out there, um, get some strengths, it teaches you also your weaknesses 
The organisation I work for has been great in providing me the opportunity and CLEAX has given me more confidence. Most of our people come with great clinical skills, but it's, but it's how you actually mesh the two areas of the clinical care and then being a leader and a manager within an environment that can sometimes be throwing all kinds of things at you. I think one of the key factors for us, and, and it was essential to the program, is the choice of the facilitator and mentor. I don't think you can underestimate the role of that person in this program. I don't think anybody can um, debate the importance of good leadership. In this industry, you'll, you'll see wherever you have problems with any of your services, it will be because there's an issue at the leadership level. It's always from that top down. And this program really helped some of our managers who I guess we could see were struggling with some things, learn some new skills and really put them into practice, both clinically and both professionally. So if, we, if we're really serious around saying it's about embedding it in organisational cultures, then it's got to be the paradigm of education that changes. I mean, the hierarchy in organisations is dangerous because it's always potentially at the top. But when you get big, you've got to, on my view is you've got to empower people lower down. And we were talking, Chris and I, about that frozen middle section, uh, you know, that you've got to unfreeze that group uh, to allow them to you know, give them the authority to make mistakes, to, to take the initiative, to move things, and then I think you get that creation. The role of the organisational support is very important in, in um, creating, in helping me with my role. It gave us the direction, the motivation, and gave us the opportunity to do many courses, and CLIAC is one of the major courses. I need good leaders to be able to perform my job, to be able to demonstrate to my staff an ideal of the organisation, what they want as leaders. Good leadership is about education and training as well. Ongoing learning uh, and educa education is very important. The key learnings for me as a facilitator of CLIAC have been how uh, vital it is for people to have an opportunity to gain leadership skills. We very quickly want to promote good clinical nurses to manager roles without giving them those really important people skills about leadership of others. CLIAC is unique because it provides, first of all, the opportunity to, to research uh, the actual studies and see whether it is making an impact. This is the first opportunity that I've known of where a leadership program in aged care is also backed by some clinical findings. I had the joy of um, hearing people on the phone ring me with a problem or a concern and being able to say, um, thank you so much for your help when all I'd done was listen. They'd solved it for themselves. So I saw people grow in confidence, I saw people grow in skills of people management. So I had many wonderful benefits of being the facilitator for CLIAC. At the end stage of the program, I asked the participants to, uh, to change their modes. They'd been doing a lot of thinking, um, a lot of processing of how they practiced and I wanted them to just change change their brain over a little bit. So I gave them paints and paper and asked them to draw things that CLIAC meant to them. The themes that came out of those drawings was quite enlightening. Things like people drew um, stick figures that were bent over and troubled by a cloud over their heads um, and as a a progression of those stick figures, they actually ended up with their arms held up in the air, the clouds gone and a smile on their faces. Other people drew pictures of bees cross-pollinating because we had residential participants and community participants. There was a lovely um, melding of two different teams and they depicted that. Some of the teams uh, drew pictures of pot plants, first of all with just a seed inside the pot plant and then a small shoot and then a few leaves and then a flower, just showing that they saw that it was a period of growth and uh, challenge and 
great opportunity. Well, I think you can hear what I said earlier about, yeah. you know, I think condensing down the key findings from the study and yeah. making sure that they get into the workforce um, they, they definitely need to go forward to that to that yeah. workforce advisory group when it comes to them planning what works and what doesn't work in terms of workforce planning with the new aged care reforms. When places go bad, Jane's comment, comment you can't do anything with education, you've got to change the yeah. fundamentals. Yeah. Yes, that's it. And each of those will be different. Yes, yeah. So that it's articulated as far and as wide as possible around the industry through uh, industry uh, conferences, uh, maybe better practice workshops and a whole range of things. I think if you went to um, you know, the workforce development committees which have started meeting again for Doha and others, um, the one takeaway is that they must be linked or have an overarching imperative. Because at the moment they are just voices in the wilderness by themselves looking at very narrow subsets of what leadership may be. And if leadership is the one defining differential between high performance and low performance, well why aren't we all working on it in a coordinated fashion? Yeah. Um, and that's a big question. I do. I'm not saying it's a small, small task, but it is something I think we need to be mindful of when we are sitting around these tables. The clinical leadership in aged care program and the research that we have conducted in the past three years has been a great success. No doubt there are challenging aspects, but we have learned a lot, but also we can actually pass that our learning to other people in improving leadership in aged care. Well, I think that as a statistician, I analyze the data and now I can see that the program itself has made a huge difference to the actual working lives of the leaders who've been trained in the CLIAC program. And it's great to see that BCS are planning to implement it throughout their organisation, that the uptake is going to continue. They're so enthusiastic about it, they're rolling it out to the control groups and it's going to that way spread throughout the whole of the BCS and hopefully from there into the entire aged care workforce. Leadership is an interesting term that people often talk about how important it is but it's not often used or implemented to change our culture. My hope is to be able to pass our learning to other aged care providers and also people working in aged care sector about the importance of improving or developing leadership capacity in aged care with the support from their organizations. And our CLIAC Clinical Leadership in Aged Care program is going to be an instrumental for their development. As a nurse and as a researcher, I would like to see the Clinical Leadership in Aged Care program more widely implemented in the aged care system. We need better leadership capacity in aged care, and we have seen through our program that this makes a, a huge link to care practice as well as improving staff work environment.